Problem number six is a very famous physics problem. A hunter fires a gun at a monkey in a tree. At the instant the bullet leaves the gun, the monkey falls from the tree. Prove that if the gun is aimed directly at the monkey, the bullet must hit the monkey. Let's first look at that motion. Here is our monkey up in the tree. The problem specifies that the gun is aimed directly at the monkey, and when the gun is fired, the monkey starts to fall. Let's take a shot at the monkey. Bullet travels, and when it crosses the path of the monkey, it hits the monkey. So in that case, we had a successful shot. The problem mentions nothing about the initial velocity of the bullet as it emerges from the gun. Let's try another shot. This time, we'll let the initial velocity be larger. The bullet travels faster, again hits the monkey, but this time further above the ground than it did before. Let's try another shot, this time with a much lower initial velocity. Again, the monkey is hit, but in this case, much closer to the ground than in the previous two cases. In order to help us understand this problem, we're going to take a shot now that we can't really take in reality. We're going to take a shot with the acceleration of gravity turned off. The bullet travels in a straight line. The monkey does not fall. We are not surprised when the bullet, which is aimed at the monkey, hits the monkey. In reality, the monkey falls. It falls from where it was originally. The bullet falls from where it would have been if gravity were not there to where it actually is when gravity is present. The problem is to prove that in the, at the time that the bullet crosses the path of the monkey, both the bullet and the monkey are at the same height. Try to solve that problem before watching its solution. Here is a diagram of our problem. The bullet emerges from the gun with a velocity which has a magnitude v0. It makes an angle theta with respect to the x-axis. The initial velocity has both x and y components. When the bullet crosses the path of the monkey, I've labeled it the vertical displacement of the bullet is y with respect to the origin of our coordinate system, and that the vertical displacement of the monkey is y prime. For the time being, we've let these two distances be different from one another. The monkey drops from a height h above our origin at a distance x from our origin. The problem asked us to prove that if the uh, gun is aimed at the monkey and if the monkey drops when the gun is fired, the monkey will be hit. What does a proof constitute in this case? Suppose we let t be the time when the paths cross, when the bullet crosses the path of the monkey. If y is equal to y prime at that time, then we have a hit. So if we could prove that y is equal to y prime at time t, we, have, we would have proven what we've asked, been asked to prove. In general, the displacement y is equal to y0 plus v0yt plus 1 half gt squared. If we apply this first to the bullet, we can write that for the bullet, the initial displacement y0 is equal to 0. Since the original position of the bullet corresponds with the origin of our coordinate system, the initial velocity v0y is equal to v0 times the sine of the angle theta. Therefore, the displacement y could be written that y is equal to 0 plus v0 sine theta times 
times T plus 0.5 GT squared. If we do the same for the monkey, for the monkey, the initial position Y0 prime, we can call it, is <clears throat> equal to H. It's H above the origin. The initial velocity in the Y direction for the monkey is zero. The monkey starts from rest. Therefore, the displacement Y prime would then be equal to H plus zero for the term containing the zero Y prime plus 0.5 GT squared. Each of these expressions contains the quantity 0.5 GT squared. The one for Y contains the quantity V0 sine theta T, and the one for Y prime contains the quantity H. If we could somehow show that H and V0 sine theta T were the same, then we would have proved what we want. Let's see if we can find a relationship between H and V0 and sine theta and so on. If we go back to our drawing, we look at the triangle, which has an angle theta here, a side opposite to that of H, and a side adjacent to that of X. The tangent of that angle is equal to H divided by X. Let me write that, that the tangent of theta is equal to H divided by X or that X could then, or rather H we really want, H is equal to X times the tangent of theta, or that H is equal to X sine theta divided by the cosine of theta since the tangent of theta can be written as sine theta over cosine theta. All right, let's now investigate our quantity x. If we again go back to our diagram, the displacement x would be equal to the velocity in the x direction, which is v0 cosine theta multiplied by t. So we can use this in place of x. Let's write our equation over again. We had that h is equal to x times the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, which now we can write x is equal to v0 cosine theta t and then multiplied by sine theta divided by cosine theta. The cosine terms cancel out, and we get that H then is equal to V0 sine theta multiplied by T. And that's just what we've been trying to prove. We said that if we could show that h was equal to v0 sine theta t, then y would be equal to y prime, and we would have proven what we were looking for. All right, so the monkey doesn't have much of a chance. If you want to hit the monkey, all you have to do is aim at the monkey, as long as the monkey will cooperate and drop from the tree at the time the trigger is pulled. The only thing that has to be guaranteed is that the initial velocity of the bullet has to be large enough so that it will at least cross the path of the monkey before the monkey hits the ground. The bullet cannot fall short. All right, that's our problem. Let's move on then to another problem.